Hi, and welcome to another Tech Bytes video. I'm Mark from AMX. This is part two of the video, Creating Your First Flow in Muse Automator. We're going to pick up where we left off in the first video, with our controller node and our control panel node in place on the workspace and connected to its hardware. The first thing I'd like to do is create a flow that will use the Relay 1 On, Relay 1 Off, and Relay 1 Toggle buttons on the touch panel to operate the relays on a CE REL8 that was connected in a prior video. The start of the flow will be the UI control node. This node allows us to monitor the state of the buttons and levels on a touch panel. I'm going to drag a UI control node onto the workspace and double click it to edit its properties. Here I'll change the name to Relay 1 on Push. Next I'll choose which touch panel that I want to monitor. I'll pick Varia Test Panel. Notice that when I pick the panel, the panel pages and buttons appear in the box below. The Type Selection box allows us to choose what triggers the event. The choice is Button or Level. I'm going to choose Button. Next, I'll pick the button that I want to program to. In the box, I'll select Relay 1 On. If you have a panel with a lot of buttons, you can search for the button name using the search box. The trigger field selects when the action should begin. On the press of the button, on the release of the button, or on either. I'm going to select Push. In the State field, I'll pick On. This will set the feedback of the button, that is, making the button on the panel change from green to bright green when it is pressed. Now I'll press Done to close the properties. Let's take a quick look at one of the nodes in the Common palette. I'm going to drag the Debug node onto the workspace and connect it to the UI Control node that we just added. Simply click on the connector of the UI Control node and drag it to the connector on the Debug node. Now push the Deploy button. If the sidebar with the Debug button is not visible in your workspace, you can click the hamburger, select View, and check the Show Sidebar box, or you can use the shortcut Control Space. In the sidebar, select the Debug Messages tab and click the Clear All button to clear the output. I'll open a VNC window so I can show the touch panel. I'm going to push the Relay 1 On button on the touch panel now. Let's watch the debug output. You can see in the debug window the message Relay 1 On, Message Payload Boolean, and then the actual message, which is true. You can add as many debug nodes as you like to follow the logic of your flow and be sure things are working as you expect. You can also turn the output of the debug node on or off by clicking the box attached to the node. This can be helpful if you've added many debug nodes, but you only need to see the output of one or two. Also notice that when I pushed the button on the touch panel, the button changed from green to bright green indicating the state selection that I made in its properties. Now that we know the touch panel button is working, let's add the action we want it to perform. I'll add a command node and double click it to open its properties. I'll name this node Relay1 On. I'll select the CERL8 as the device. When I do this, you can see that Relay shows up in the window. I'll select Relay, then 1, then State. The selected box shows what I've picked. For the input, I'm going to select Manual Configuration and pick True for the action. That will pass the true state to the REL8, and that will cause the first relay to turn on. Now I'll click Done to close the properties. Now I need to connect the UI Control node to the Command node. I'll just click and drag from the Control point on the UI Control node to the Control point on the Command node to make the connection. I'll deploy this flow to make it active. Now I'll bring up the touch panel, as well as a view of the relay box. I'll press the Relay 1 On button. Pressing the button changes the button from green to bright green, and you can see the relay turn on on the relay box when the button is pressed. Now let's add another flow to turn the relay off. I'm going to copy the Relay On flow and edit the properties of the nodes. First, I'll change the name of the UI control node, then I'll change which button on the touch panel will trigger this event to Relay 1 Off Push. 
Next, I'll change the name of the command node to relay one off, and I'll change the relay state to be false. Since I've added nodes, I'll push deploy. Pushing the on and off buttons, you can see the relay is opening and closing, but there's a problem. The relay turns on and off, but after the first push, the on button remains bright green and the off button remains red. Both buttons are in the on state, even though the relay is turning on and off. This is happening because when the UI control relay one on push is triggered by the push of the button, its state function is setting the feedback of the button to on. In order to turn the button feedback off, I'll need to add another UI control node. I'll name this Relay1 on Release. Pick the Varia panel, select Button for the type, and Release for the trigger. But for the state, I'm going to choose Off. This is going to cause the panel to turn from bright green to green when I release the button. I need to click Done and then Deploy to make the flows active. Let's push the button again and see what happens. It turns bright green when I push the button and goes back to green when I release it. I'll copy the new node and edit its properties so we have the same effect on the Relay Off button. After deploying the new nodes, you can see that the buttons are working the way we want. Now let's take a look at one of the other common nodes, the Inject node. This can be helpful if you don't have a touch panel online. You can use the Inject node to trigger a command. I'll drag an Inject node onto the workspace. Setting the properties, I'll set the name to Trigger and the payload type to Boolean True. Now I'll connect the inject node to the same command node that the UI command is connected to. Let's copy that node to do the same thing for relay one off. I'll hit deploy and now I can initiate the command by clicking the box on the inject node. You can see that using the inject node has the same effect on the command node as pushing the button on the touch panel. Now let's take a look at the toggle button on the touch panel. We want to use this button to turn the relay on if it's off or off if it's on. To do this, we'll need to use some new nodes. Let's add another set of UI control nodes for the toggle button. I'll name the first node Relay1 Toggle Push. I'll pick Test Room Varia for the panel and button for the type. Now I'll pick the Relay1 toggle button in the tree and set the trigger to push. For the state, I'll pick on. I'll make the same changes to the Relay1 toggle release node, picking release for the trigger and off for the state. In order to toggle the relay, we need to know its current state. For this, I'll drag the status node onto the workspace. I'll double click it to set its properties and change its name to get relay one state. I'll pick the CERL8 for the device and select which relay I'd like to monitor. In this case, relay one. Now click done. Now we're going to use a new node from the function palette. I'll drag a switch node onto the workspace and double click to edit its properties. I'll leave the default name as switch. The switch node allows you to add multiple outputs. The payload of the output is based on the result of an expression. For the first output, we'll check if the incoming payload is true. To add another output, I'll click the add button at the bottom of the window. For this output, I'll check if the incoming payload is false. Now I can click Done. I've already created command nodes for Relay1 On and Relay1 Off, so I'll copy and paste those here.
I'll connect output 1 of the switch node to the relay 1 off command node, and output 2 of the switch node to the relay 1 on command node. Connect the rest of the flow together and click Deploy. Now we have the Relay 1 on, Relay 1 off, and Relay 1 toggle buttons working with feedback that shows the buttons were pressed and released. But the button feedback that we have doesn't show the true state of the relay. Let's add that now. I want to be able to use the actual state of the relay to light up the relay LED on the touch panel. Let's hide the sidebar to have a little more room. To get feedback from the relay, we have to add another node. To see state changes from a device, you use the event node. I'll drag an event node onto the workspace and double click it to edit its properties. I'm going to name this node Relay1 State and choose the CE REL8 for the device. In the properties tree, I'll select Relay 1 State. This node will pass true when the relay is closed and false when the relay is open. First, I'll drag a command node onto the workspace and connect it to the new event node. I'll double click the command node to edit its properties. I'm going to name this one TP Feedback LED 1 and select the touch panel as the device. For my touch panel, I know the LED that I want to light up is port number 1, channel 101, so I'll select that. You can find this information in the TPD5 file that is loaded to the panel. For the input, I'll choose Message Payload. Then I'll click Done. Because I chose Message.Payload as the input to the command node, the LED will turn on if the incoming payload is true, and it will turn off if the incoming payload is false. Click Deploy to enable these new nodes. Note, even if the relay were turned on by a method other than the touch panel button, the LED feedback would still be correct, because the event node triggers if the relay changes state. Now we have the flows working the way we want. I want to explain that at this point, the underlying code that the flows create is running on my laptop. That's what happens when you push the Deploy button. If I were to disconnect my laptop, since that is where the code is running, the touch panel and relays would no longer work. To have the code run on the Muse controller, I'll need to use the push function. Drop down the push-pull menu and select the flow that you want to transfer to the controller. Then click the push icon on the right. This will send the code to the connected controller and you can now disconnect your laptop. The code will continue to run on the controller. I hope you enjoyed this short video on how to create some simple flows in Muse Automator.